Good morning. Uh, we're here to provide a, a few alternatives for uh, masks that have high ca filtering capacity. Um, hopefully this could be of help to you. All these materials are uh, available in the hospital and most, uh, I guess, uh, hospitals will have some version of this. We will be demonstrating three different methods of securing a mask with a high viral filtration capacities. One using the regular anesthesia mask. The key element in all the masks is the PALS filter that has a uh, filtration efficiency of 99.999%. We'll use also a mask that is used with the patient belonging bag and of course the filter. And then a modified BiPAP mask full face. So this is the modified version and this is the original version and we're going to go through all these three. As you can see, all these elements are easy to find in an operating room or with the aid of respiratory therapist services and, and I guess a personal belonging bag as well. Uh, so immediately available items. The first technique is using a regular anesthesia mask in a high capacity filter. This is a PAL uh, P100 filter. It has a filtering capacity of 99.999% uh, efficiency on filtration and viral and bacterial matter. The filters uh, just will simply connect it to the mask and then a head strap use. Uh, you can do it yourself, but for a demonstration, I'm gonna have Jackie help me here do it uh, as it is easier with an assistant to fit it properly. So I'm gonna put the mask on. So as you can see, we use an anesthesia head strap to secure the mask to uh, the holders that come in uh, basically all anesthesia masks. Uh, the filter uh, has only a small amount of dead space capacity and that does not affect uh, our breathing capacity at all. And there's very low uh, resistance to airflow, so you don't feel like you're suffocating or anything like that. This is the same filter that many respiratory services uses for their uh, uh, ventilator systems. As you can see, there is a full fit. Uh, when I occlude the entry, you can see that I'm not able to breathe around the mask uh, as it is well fitted. And also the glasses can be used, and it's very comfortable to uh, uh, use this mask. Uh, the straps can be adjusted to guarantee uh, good occlusion uh, on the mask. I'm just doing testing to, so you can appreciate how uh, the air is not able to go around the mask, but through the filter. Now we're just gonna remove this. Again, you can do all this by yourself and you don't need assistance uh, to do this for you. The second method is a little more rustic and it implies using a patient belonging bag. And the bag will take also a filter I'm going to open a new filter here just to demonstrate this. The pulse filter comes with a small gooseneck. And that gives the ability of putting the filter in the outside. Sorry, there is a, the, the narrow portion of the filter. Putting the filter in the outside, averting the bag and attaching this gooseneck really, really, really tight. Now, when you do that, you will have created a seal with a plastic bag. I'm gonna cut part of the filter out. This is one extra tool. Hopefully, of course, your scissors are clean. Now, when you do this, as you can see inside, the plastic membrane is, is still inside of the hole. So you actually have to cut this to be able to breathe up appropriately. So that's one thing that you have to do. Otherwise, you will not be able to breathe. Now that you've created a path, you can add some securing to the filter by putting a tegoderm or something to prevent the filter from dislodging from the bag. But we're gonna skip that step. In the bag, this goes in, in top of your face. Hopefully we'll have our mask removed, like a snorkel, you know. And you can tie the end of the other strap. If I 
completely seal airway and protect the uh, head. You have to breathe through the snorkel, otherwise the bag will fog and you won't be able to see well. So that's one of the problems in this uh, system is you have to use it as a snorkel. If you breathe just within the bag, you will fog and you will lose uh, visibility. Uh, and, and this is one completely final, again, with a turgidum in the top, and uh, again, used as a snorkel. Again, patient equipment bags connected to a filter, and you protect all your head, including eyes. And it's good if you're wearing glasses, these two initial methods allow uh, for people that are wearing glasses. The third one is taking a BiPAP full face mask, that the BiPAP masks have some areas of mobility. They can be disconnected and they have an oxygen inlet and also has a valve inside. And you can see a little plastic inside, there's a valve. Now that valve has to be removed. So for that you have to take a clamp or sore and actually completely remove the valve. So if I, let me show you here. If I lift the valve, I can pick it up with a clamp and completely remove it. After that is removed, there is another little piece that you ought to probably remove. And then you, for this, it's a, more, a little more cumbersome process, you will take a glue gun, and that's what we did, this is the final one, and we have glue gun all around. The expiratory port which is the opening in the mask also has to be completely sealed. That little hole that was in the base of the, the elbow is also completely sealed with a glue gun. We have attached a oxygen tubing to the oxygen inlet and also glue gun the inside of the mask. Now this mask goes full face. You really, you cannot wear glasses with it, otherwise it will not seal your face properly. So that's uh, an issue. So I'm going to connect the straps and then Jack is going to help me as well to connect it properly. You see that the assistant, while trying to connect the mask, had a little bit of trouble. So it's uh, good to, we had our practice to understand uh, how the connection goes. Uh, it really snaps onto it and, and it holds very securely once you have it on. Notice also how the mask is a little fogged to begin with. We had cleaned it before with a non-proper uh, cleaning towel that contains some alcohol and that had damaged a little bit the plastic. Uh, it does need to have an oxygen source though connected to it to prevent fogging. Otherwise, the mask will fog inside uh, and that's a problem. And also having a positive pressure source will uh, allow any potential leaks, again, to go uh, outside. You, of course, have to connect the filter. Ideally, you should connect it tightly before you put the mask on. And the, you can see when I put my hand sealing the filter, I, the mask gets sucked into my face, uh, kind of demonstrating that the tightness of the circuit. And I cannot breathe from uh, uh, through the mask or, or the mask face uh, area. The, I had the O2 only at two liters at this moment, so I did have some more fogging occurring. But again, probably five liters will do, and, and now we're just uh, taking down the mask. So fogging in these is a problem, so uh, using higher flows of oxygen will uh, prevent that. Uh, in this case, probably more than two liters as I had it set up would have been beneficial. Um, so these are options. I hope um, if you need it, it can help you to protect yourself better uh, on these times. I want to thank uh, Hanan uh, Malek and uh, Jackie for helping. and. The great assistants, uh, Jackie Dominguez and Hanan Malek, thank you.